Hi internet friends, the topic of today's video is the 144,000. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I was taught that only 144,000 faithful Jehovah's Witnesses would go to heaven. I'd like to explore the validity of that claim and also compare it to what scripture has to say. Okay, let's jump right in. Watchtower breaks true believers into two groups. The first group is the great crowd of Jehovah's Witnesses who after faithfully enduring to the end will live forever on a paradise earth. The second group are 144,000 faithful Jehovah's Witnesses who will be chosen to rule with Jesus in heaven. I could look at many Watchtower publications dealing with this, but frankly, their teaching on this has changed quite a bit over time. So I would like to just take a look at two articles. The February 1982 Watchtower on page 30 says this. For 19 centuries, there was only the one calling, the heavenly one, with Jehovah being very selective as to who would serve with his son to make up the kingdom government. In time, the prescribed but limited number of 144,000 would be reached. So Watchtower is saying here that Jehovah has been selecting these 144,000 members for the past 19 centuries. So my question is, if it's taken more than 19 centuries for Jehovah to choose the faithful ones, well then what type of criteria can Jehovah possibly have? Anyway, let's take a look at the scriptures that were quoted to see how they support that stance. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans eleven nineteen. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Let's take a look at the August 15th, 1997 Watchtower to see what it has to say on this topic. Consider the text at Revelation 7, verse 1 and 3, which says that the four winds of destruction are held back until after we have sealed the slaves of our God in their foreheads. Okay, so I was reading this paragraph in the 1997 Watchtower and I saw something actually further down on the page that I just felt compelled to discuss. This topic came up for me when I was going over the word watchtower video, what that word actually, where it came from. And I chose not to go into this topic, but here it is again, and I'm gonna bring it up in this video. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. Further down in the 1997 Watchtower, on the same page that I just read, it's talking about a faithful watchman. And take a look at what it has to say. In the meantime, we do well to heed the direction given by the faithful slave. For over a hundred years, the modern day slave has faithfully served as a watchman. The Watchtower of January 1st, 84, explains, this watchman observes how events are developing on earth in fulfillment of Bible prophecy, sounds the warning of an impending great tribulation. And then in paragraph 14 it says, remember it is a watchman's job to call out just what he sees. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. I have to bring up the topic of Enochian magic. I left this out of the Watchtower video, as I had said earlier. In Enochian magic, watchtowers and watchmen play vital roles in invoking evil spirits or angels that have to do with the apocalypse. Let me explain. I'll put the link down in the description box. Given what I just read in the Watchtower about the Watchers and the Four Winds and the Armageddon and the Apocalypse, the Great Tribulation, and the Watchman sounding a warning, take a look at this text from a book on Enochian magic. It says, The Lord gave unto the world her time, and placed over her angelic keepers, watchmen, and princes. We know that the watchtowers are equivalent to the watchmen from 
Kelly's great vision of the watchtowers, expounded by the angel. The four houses, the four angels, which are the four overseers and watchtowers. So according to Enochian magic, the Lord gave angelic keepers to the people called watchmen. The watchtowers, according to Enochian magic, are four overseers. Let's read on. To open the gates of the watchtowers is to mingle the eternal with the temporal, to admit the angels into our world during the transformation known as the apocalypse. So according to Enochian magic, opening the gates of the watchtowers allows these angelic keepers or watchmen into the world who follow God's plan and execute judgment during the apocalypse. I just find it so interesting the similarities between the two. You have a watchtower quoting scripture about holding back the four winds. You have the watchers. You have the apocalypse. You have the watchtower. Overall, watchtower literature is apocalyptic in nature. You have to know this. Growing up as a Jehovah's Witness, all I ever heard about was Armageddon. Pictures of doom and destruction, people dying. And in comparison to Enochian magic, which invokes watchers through the four quarters of the watchtower, that's what it's all about. And they do this for transformation known as the apocalypse. I just found it interesting. So let's move on and see what else we can find out about the 144,000. So Revelation chapter seven, one through eight. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on the, any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And then in verses 5 through 8, it goes to name the 12 tribes, specifically Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin. I think I got them all. So in reality, Nobody knows who the 144,000 members are. Scripture says that they're from the 12 tribes of Jordan. Fire destroyed the genealogical records when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. So basically the 12 tribes are known only to God at this time. The text tells us that these members will be sealed just prior to the Great Tribulation. So they have to be alive when that time comes. So from Watchtower's perspective, I don't know how they could have been chosen for the past 19 centuries, because then how will they be sealed? Will they maybe be resurrected and then sealed? But scripture doesn't say that anywhere. So what does scripture say specifically about the 144,000? Let's take a look and see. In Revelation chapter seven, verses three, they're called the servants of God, and that the four angels do not hurt the earth until the 144,000 are sealed, and that they will be the first to receive the seal of God. Chapter seven, verses five through eight says that they'll be Jews. The 1982 Watchtower that I had read earlier also quoted a scripture, and let's take a look at that. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's names written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harp. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins." These are they which follow the Lamb whether, wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. So a couple more things that we learned about the 144,000. They sung a new song that could be learned by none other. They're redeemed from the earth. 
They're not defiled with women, and they follow Jesus wherever they go. That's in chapter 14, verses 3 and 4. Chapter 14, verses 5 says that they stand before the throne of God and are without fault. Chapter 14, verse 1 tells us they'll stand on Mount Sinai with Jesus, having his Father's name in their foreheads. And one scripture I didn't read, but it's Revelation 22, 4 says, they shall see God's face. So what is their role? Well, being transformed by God, they'll fearlessly preach the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and all the money in the world will not be able to buy the seal of God. After all, the book of Revelation is all about the revealing of Jesus Christ. You see, because the first time Jesus came, he came as a baby, and he willingly gave up his life. But the second time he comes, he'll come as the Lion of Judah to judge the living and the dead. People will know him either as their savior or as their judge. Regarding the role of the 144,000, people who love truth will follow their lead. People who hate truth will find every reason to silence them. The testimony of the 144,000 will alienate the religious leaders and political leaders of the world. They'll be persecuted. They will speak truth, as people will be judged by scripture. Every nation, kindred, and tongue will hear the terms and condition of salvation through the testimony of this 144,000. So, internet friends, I hope you learned something today. What do you think about Watchtower's explanation of the 144,000? in comparison to what scripture has to say. Do you feel that it is a symbolic number? If so, what does it symbolize? Scripture usually gives a definition of symbolic text, such as in Daniel's image. Please let me know. I look forward to your comments. And please click like and subscribe to my videos. Click the bell so that you can be made aware of when I post a new video. And I hope you have a great day.